So in this last module, we're going to do some practice exercises together cutting clutter. Uh, I'm going to show you a sentence and then I'm going to uh, read the sentence and then I'll have you pause the video and edit it on your own. And then I'll go through the editing, uh, how I edit it, so you can kind of compare notes. And we'll do this for several sentences. So the first sentence reads, anti-inflammatory drugs may be protective for the occurrence of Alzheimer's disease. So I want you to think about all the extra words that you can cut out of that sentence. See how many you can cut. So pause the video now and uh, try to edit this sentence and then I'll show you how I edited it. Great, so when I edited uh, this sentence, I read it through and I said anti-inflammatory drugs may be protective for the occurrence of. I found that part to be quite wordy. So rather than be protective for, how about just may protect against and then we don't really need the occurrence of, we may protect against Alzheimer's disease, right? We don't need the occurrence of. So anti-inflammatory drugs may protect against Alzheimer's disease. So hopefully you had a similar rewrite. Obviously you might have done slightly different things. And always feel free to um, email if you've got a, a better rewrite that you want to share with the class. Sometimes I might miss a few words that uh, could still be edited out. So here's the second example. Uh, clinical seizures have been estimated to occur in 0.5% to 2.3% of the neonatal population. So now pause the video and edit that sentence on your own. Great, so uh, now I'm going to go through my edit on this sentence. So clinical seizures have been estimated to occur. Well that seems like a lot of extra words. How about um, we just get rid of the have been estimated to and just say clinical seizures occur. Now some of you may feel like that's being too direct, right? Have, you want to put the hedge word that it's, it's been estimated to be. We don't want to be so direct as to say it occurs. But notice that in the statistics in this sentence, the 0.5% to 2.3%, that's a range. So it's obvious immediately to the reader that you're talking about estimates because you've presented the reader with a range of possible different values. So I think in this case it's okay to just say clinical seizures occur and then of course we can give the references for those numbers at the end of the sentence. We don't need all this have been estimated to. Um, and then we get to occur in 0.5% to 2.3% of, uh, of the neonatal population. Now you might have thought, oh neonatal population, that sounds really important, I better leave it untouched. And in fact, I'm, the first time I edited this sentence I missed this, uh, but what is a neonatal population? So neo means new, nate means born, so this is just a fancy way of saying newborns. See how much more direct and easy that is to read? Clinical seizures occur in 0.5% to 2.3% of newborns. And then, of course, we'd want to have some references at the end of that sentence. So hopefully you've got something similar. Again, you may not have an identical rewrite to mine, but hopefully you have something similar. So the next example reads, ultimately, P53 guards not only against malignant transformation, but also plays a role in developmental processes as diverse as aging, differentiation, and fertility. So now pause the video and try editing that sentence on your own. Okay, so now I'm going to go through my, my edit on this sentence. So ultimately, P53 guards not only against malignant transformation, um, how about we say instead of that, malignant transformation is just talking about cancer. So how about besides preventing, guarding against is just a way to say preventing, besides preventing cancer, P53 also plays, I'm going to make this roles because we're talking about more than one role, plays roles in uh, developmental processes as diverse as, well, I don't think I need to say all of that. That doesn't really add much. So plays roles, how about just plays roles in aging, differentiation, and fertility. It's kind of understood that that's a diverse range of things. So besides preventing cancer, P53 also plays roles in aging, differentiation, and fertility. See how much we could strip out of that sentence without losing the meaning? So here's the next one. 
Injuries to the brain and spinal cord have long been known to be among the most devastating and expensive of all injuries to treat medically. So pause the video and edit that sentence on your own. All right, so here's my edit for this sentence. So injuries to the brain and spinal cord have long been known to be. So that's kind of a long way of saying are, they are. Now the fact that they, you know, it's been known for a long time, again, maybe you're gonna put some references to indicate that, but we don't really need a long verb like that. So just injuries to the brain and spinal cord are, and we don't need this to be here, so are among the most devastating and expensive and then we get this little bit of repetition of all injuries to treat medically. Well, when we're saying they're devastating and expensive, it's kind of assumed that we're talking about their medical treatment, right? So I don't think we need any of this. So we just say, uh, and of course the injuries is, is repetitive, so we just say injuries to the brain and spinal cord are among the most devastating and expensive, period. You, again, may have slightly different uh, rewrites than this, but uh, hopefully you have something somewhat similar. Here's the next one. An IQ test measures an individual's abilities to perform functions that usually fall in the domains of verbal communication, reasoning, and performance on tasks that represent motor and spatial capabilities. You can hear a lot of extra words in there. So pause the video for a moment and edit that uh, sentence. All right, so here's uh, what I did on this sentence. So an IQ test measures an individual's, and then we get abilities to perform functions that usually fall in the domains. This is kind of very wordy. How about we just get to what the test measures? An IQ test measures an individual's, I'm gonna get rid of all of this. An IQ test basically measures an individual's verbal abilities, right? So we could just say that at the end. Uh, an IQ test measures an individual's verbal, I don't think we need communication after verbal, right? Because that's just repetitive. Verbal, reasoning, and then we get performance on tasks that represent. How about we say it more directly that it's the measuring their motor and spatial capabilities. And perhaps there are more than one type of IQ test, so we might want to use the word or here, so that not every IQ test measures all three, but some may measure any one of these. So an IQ test measures an individual's verbal, reasoning, or motor and spatial capabilities. So again, hopefully uh, in your rewrite, you got some, something similar and you were able to strip a lot of those excess words out. Okay, one last example here says, as we can see from figure two, if the return kinetic energy is less than 3.2 uh, UP, there will be two electron trajectories associated with this kinetic energy. So go ahead and pause the video and edit that on your own, and then we'll talk about it afterwards. So let me show you my edit for this sentence. Again, you might not get exactly the same thing, but hopefully you're cutting a lot of the same words. So as we can see from figure two, let's just say figure two shows. In fact, this little as we can see from uh, is just kind of a lot of extra words. We can just say it directly, figure two shows, or we could even just reference figure two in parentheses at the end of the sentence. Figure two shows, um, if the return kinetic energy is less than 3.2, let's just say figure two shows that a return kinetic energy less than 3.2 UP, that's kind of now the subject of the sentence, it, that it, it, the subject of this clause, that, uh, that a return kinetic energy less than 3.2, how about it just that it yields two electron trajectories. We don't need to repeat that kinetic energy. So something like figure two shows that a return kinetic energy less than 3.2 UP yields two electron trajectories. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.